This was our biggest storm of 2021. From out of control conditions to surprise shore break tubes to scoring some of the biggest barrels I've had here in a year and then capping it off with an all day tube affair with friends. What a swell. Oh, oh. my God. Well, y'all, welcome back. We have been getting momicked by a nor'easter for days now. And I hadn't filmed any of it because it was just raining and blowing 40 to 50 and nasty. Yesterday, we just did movie day with the kids. Well, except we did find out the waves were good at this spot that I'm walking up to now. And uh, ran out here just all of a sudden and scored. I mean, it was firing. Like, I think I went seven for eight barrels on my first waves. Like, of the first eight waves I caught, I got barreled and made seven of them. It was crazy. Motels is starting to wash over now. We got one more high tide cycle. The wind has died out like 20 miles an hour. It was gusting over 60 yesterday. Flooding in Hatteras, overwash in Buxton and, and Rodanthe. Road's been closed getting work so now we're kind of getting to the back side of it still got days of swell lined up not the best winds but there is a spot that's offshore and so jeffrey and i are gonna try and score you know what while i walk up here to check it why don't you guys check out some gopro clips i scored yesterday um jeffrey couldn't get here because the road was washed out at high tide so i just brought the gopro paddled out with some friends and had a good old time
Well, y'all, we uh, got a little plot twist. The wind switched while we were checking it and it got bad. Yeah, so now since that's not happening, I am really thankful that we scored yesterday. That was completely unexpected. Uh, and now we're looking at tomorrow afternoon, potentially Wednesday, for some pretty crazy waves. Uh, because of that, we're not gonna go out here. If there wasn't anything coming, we might just go out and send it anyway, but instead we're gonna save our energy, go get some work done in the meantime, and wait and see what happens tomorrow. But hope you guys enjoyed at least that session from yesterday. I am very thankful for that. It was so perfect, like so perfect. Blowing 35 to 40 plus in the afternoon, or like as we stayed out, but perfect. It was fun. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go home, make some more coffee, and we'll reconvene during the next session. how slow you should drive through the water. This is actually even kind of fast, yeah. in my opinion. Anybody, this anybody, this anybody is how slow you should drive through the water. Model citizen. <laughs> Good morning. Um, this was a bit unexpected. The wind has turned offshore earlier than predicted. I came here and watched it at the lighthouse. Bombing didn't really look doable, but then we would see a crazy one. And I was just like, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And the, we decided to send. I've tried sending it in, in way worse conditions and there's some 10 to 12 point rides out there. So we're gonna give it a go. I got a six four ready, man. Ten to twelve foot bombs on the <laughs> ten to on your head. On the head. Oh, yeah. oh, this is gonna be gnar. So uh, here's to hoping one of the boys gets one. This is the first time I've ridden anything over a five eleven at the lighthouse since like Sandy. Sandy, I rode a six six. The only thing that gets hard here is riding the long board when it gets so square. Like you need the short. Like I've even had big waves here on where the five eleven's like too long because it just doesn't fit on that late takeoff. The 5.8, you can like ollie down the base.
when I fell, it blew sand into my suit. <laughs> oh, look at that, no sandy booties. Dang, that's kind of sick. I like that. First time using it. Well, y'all, little change of plans here. Lighthouse, uh, just, we got some waves. We succeeded. No one got hurt, got some waves. But swell dropped off hard when the tide um, started sucking out and uh, never got a shot at one of those bombs I saw. But there were some psycho waves while we were out there. But anyway, came in, thought I was done for the day. Got a call that somewhere else has turned on. And so we're going to send it. Oh. <laughs> well, thanks to the call from Dana Quinn, we're going out again. That wave, oh my gosh, is that cash? Come out, come out, no. That was, he made it to the very end. That, was, that had to be cash. He's backside. Oh my gosh, all right, my mind's blown. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, look at that one. <laughs> all right, well, I have driven around everywhere this morning. I was up at five, I did not find anything, and I ended up right back here at home. <laughs> and it looks sick, so 
we're just gonna wax one up and get out there and go get some pits hopefully the wind should get better as the morning goes on hopefully improves with the tide we will see last night was an absolute score i can't even haven't even i'm trying to think you guys actually just finished that session um yeah did five hours straight three at the lighthouse two somewhere else got one of the craziest waves i've had here in a while we'll, we'll wrap that up later right now it's time to go get pitted
Yes, dude, they're crazy. Just, yeah, has yeah, a square spot. insane was that fog over the sunrise the, the other morning i woke up and the dog i took the dog outside i saw how foggy it was and then i could see that the sky was blue and i was like there's no clouds but it's super foggy i was like oh the sunrise is gonna be crazy so i grabbed the drone made some coffee flew it up and witnessed one of the coolest things i've ever seen i was so blown away it just like every five minutes the light was changing over the fog and the trees and it was like it was like being in a movie or something. I was tripping out. If you guys want to watch the long form video of that instead of just the action little quick cut, uh, check out my YouTube channel. The full like four and a half minute video of documenting that whole morning is up there. So, um, but yeah, that was like a crazy way to wrap up this swell <laughs> as if the waves weren't good enough. But man, that last day at the lighthouse was just so sweet. Uh, you know, I woke up early, was driving around, everywhere was closed out. The wind was kind of coming up southwest, wasn't super stoked, and then it fired, and it fired all day. Like, all morning, just trading off waves with everybody, all evening, it got really slow in the afternoon, um, but man, when they came in, they were pretty. And it was just, it was just such a sweet way to end that whole swell, especially considering how destructive it started out with like the overwash, and like you saw the clips of the point, and just the shoals going crazy. And then that shore break session we scored and the you know 45 mile an hour plus wins. I mean, it, it just started out so wild and so ugly and then it ended so beautifully. That's what's special about this place. You know, the, the storms, we're used to it, getting battered by a big swell like that. Luckily, that was the only one we've had this year. Um, that was the biggest swell we've had all year, actually. So it's nice that we can dodge those. And then, you know, when they do happen, we get those days like you saw the big day, which on the big day, that morning at the lighthouse, I really should have pulled the trigger sooner. When the tide was high, it was holding some bombing, you know, double overhead sets. And by the time we made the call to go out, there really weren't that many coming in. And typically you need to be at least mind surfing, like a dozen of them. <laughs> and we finally decided to go out. Tide got too low, started closing out, got smaller because it was breaking on the outer bar and uh, managed to get a few waves, but you saw how hard that session was. And I like being transparent. I, I don't wanna make it look like I paddled out there and scored a few good waves and came in. That was three hours of paddling in the current. It was hard. And I love trying on those days because I'm just out there for that one 
chance of being in the spot for the big one. And it didn't happen, but got a few waves and was stoked on that. That one, I said I straightened out and it blew sand in my suit. I actually smashed my face on the bottom too. There's a reason that you should wait to jump off your board. The wave was like still breaking and I jumped and it just drilled me into the sand. Then I was exhausted from three hours of paddling and surfing, came in, got the call somewhere else was good, had no energy, just pounded some granola bars in water and went back out and got my best wave I've had been in a while around here. Um, J Jeffrey missed the drop because when I was paddling for it, he couldn't see me from the wave in the foreground. And, uh, but man, I was like behind it, underneath it, just paddling so hard and telling myself like, just paddle more, keep paddling. Because like, I was getting nervous. It was sucking up, it was gnarly looking, I was deep. Took off and started pumping. Thought I was too deep, but just kept pumping anyway. I had a moment where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get so worse because I was going so fast and then I made it. And I, I just was so stoked. That was, that was truly special. It was hard, there was a lot of closeouts that day, but man, when the corners came in, it was some of the biggest, best waves I've seen here in at least a year. Yeah, probably since the Hurricane Teddy swell last year. So that was sweet. And what a way to cap off this fall run of surf we had. It was just felt like there was tubes every other week or almost every week. <laughs> and so we have just been spoiled around here and it's been really sweet. And I'm gonna just leave you guys there because this is probably a super long video judging by how much footage we got and uh, let you guys go. Hope you guys are having a good one. I appreciate all the support and thanks for tuning in. For those of you who haven't been following along, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on these episodes. The rest of you guys know the deal. See y'all next time.